Welcome to this brief overview of Zero Trust and Zero Trust Network Access, or ZTNA. As you know, trust is a dangerous word in IT, especially when that trust is implicit, when it's unqualified or unquestioned. Creating a large, sealed-off corporate network perimeter like we have here and trusting everything inside it has proven time and time again to be a flawed design. Yet, this is how many networks have been set up, and in many cases, they still look like this. But of course, times have changed, particularly over the last couple of years. This perimeter has eroded. Users work remotely from untrusted networks that may or may not be protected with any kind of firewall. The use of SaaS apps, cloud platforms and services leaves much of our data outside of the corporate perimeter. You know, everything is everywhere. The old model just doesn't work anymore. So what is zero trust? What does that mean? Well, it's really just a different model of trust than that of the classic network perimeter that we've been looking at. In a zero trust world, no one and nothing is automatically or implicitly trusted, be it inside or outside of the corporate network or even the network itself. Each device, user, and resource literally becomes its own micro perimeter that can only allow access once trust is verified and validated by multiple sources. But even then, it's only temporary. Trust can be revoked at any time. Trust is only established after the user's identity is verified through multi-factor authentication and the device validated that it is compliant and healthy. And then that information is used to control access or privilege to network resources. It's sort of like the old saying, trust is earned, not given. And that's absolutely how zero trust works. Now, how is zero trust used to improve remote access to network resources? Well, with old school remote access VPN, you connect to the network. And as we discussed earlier, that means that once you're on the network, you have all that implicit trust that comes with it, with potential access to other systems on the network. And device health is not considered at all when using VPN. If you have a device that's been hacked or attacked, VPN will not prevent you from connecting. And the implicit trust that VPN provides means attackers on compromised devices using VPN have broad access to other parts of the network making it an ideal target for a ransomware attack. With zero trust network access, remote workers are no longer implicitly trusted. They and their device have to earn trust constantly. Another fundamental difference is that ZTNA only connects a user to a very specific application or system, not the whole network. So in this example, you can see this remote user can access an application in AWS and another on the corporate network, but nothing else. And now with ZTNA, if a device becomes compromised by an attack, policy can prevent it from connecting to corporate networked applications and data, effectively preventing lateral movement and attacks from getting a foothold on the network. ZTNA provides much better security than remote access VPN. Not only is it removing old vulnerable VPN client software off the user's device, but it's also incorporating device health into the connection policy. And it's only connecting users to very specific resources, not the whole network, giving threats nowhere to go. So that's a very brief overview of Zero Trust and ZTNA. If you're interested in learning more about the benefits of Zero Trust Network Access, check out our website, PowerPoint, and white paper on the top six advantages that ZTNA provides over Remote Access VPN. Thanks for watching.